and welcome to the Eight Limbs Podcast. My name is Drayton Michaels. I'm a dog trainer and behavior technician, and it's been a while since I've done a podcast, so if you're tuning into this, thanks so much. The title of today's podcast is Adversaries Out of the Innocence, and this is a very big problem out here with dogs because they are innocent. So let's do a little uh, behavioral house cleaning, shall we? Dogs learn in two ways, associations and consequences. And the associative learning it can, uh, can be broken down into three categories, safe, unsafe, and neutral. Neutral means the dog knows it's there but doesn't really care because it has no value at the moment. Uh, I often use a water bottle as an example. So the water bottle's there, the dog sees it. Unless I pour water out of it or it falls off the table and scares the dog, the dog doesn't really care about that water bottle. Unsafe is on a spectrum. And the thing to understand is that that spectrum can go from non-lethal to lethal for the dog when you're talking about dog training because there are some lethal approaches that people use. And then they're safe. The dog feels good about whatever's happening, whatever stimulus is present, and that's great. And that's the category we want to keep dogs in most of the time. The problem that people run into is that they are programmed to blame dogs. It is in the media, it is in movies, it's in culture, it's on dog training, quote, TV shows, because those are nothing more than just a waste of time. So at the end of the day, what people are getting for information on the grand scale, on the macro level, is your dog is bad if they do something you don't like. Your dog is bad if they don't pay attention to you immediately. Your dog is bad when they're doing something that annoys you. Dogs aren't doing things to annoy you or piss you off. Dogs have a small prefrontal cortex, that's the part of the brain that does all the working memory and all the advanced stuff for creatures, right? We have a big prefrontal cortex. There's an area of the prefrontal cortex called the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, and it handles a lot of the right-wrong uh, determinations that brains make. Well, dogs don't really get right from wrong all the time. What they really get is safe, unsafe, and that's reinforcing, and that's not reinforcing. And that's how dogs process information, and humans are the main focus when you talk about dog training, when you talk about the dog learning, it's the human that needs to learn how to do this in a safe, effective manner. No one gets a dog and says, oh, I can't wait to yell at him. Nobody, unless you're a real psychopath or you're a jerk. But what happens is people, they go with their subconscious, what they've been told, their auto response, etc. And that's not good unless your auto response is some sort of Reassurance, redirection, removal, or reinforcement. The four R's, I like to call it. When you're looking at dog behavior, the most important thing to look at is the environment. And humans can control a lot of the environment. Recently, and I'm going to put this video in here in a second, um, it's customary that uh, where I live, I have to go down the stairs, I'm on the second floor, and I have to look out to see what's going on before I take a dog down the stairs. There could be dogs coming, there could be kids there, there could be a cat on my porch, there could be people outside doing stuff. I just need to do that every single time. It's not a problem, it's just the way I live my life so that I know that I'm making the best possible choices and whatever's going on with the dog, we're gonna have a safe outcome. So the other day, I come down the stairs and I see a dog that I, I've seen many times. I say hi to the woman, the dog wants to say hi to me, so I say hi to the dog, I give the dog a treat, and then I hand the woman some treats so she can lure her dog away. Because again, I'm not hanging out on my porch. I have a dog that's waiting at the top of the stairs and I have to go to work because I'm walking this dog as part of my job. So the dog blows her off, doesn't care about the food in her hand. She can't necessarily, you know, get the uh, dog's attention. So I go to lure the dog to help her move along and the dog jumps up at me and this is her reaction. Here's the video. How are you? How are you doing? Would you like a treat? You like cookies? Yeah, you like cookies? Yeah, good job. Now I have to go get my pupper. There you go. That's oh, you. You can use that to get him down the street. <laughs> I'll see you later. It's okay. Come on. Come on. Let's go. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. If, well, if you shorten your, if you, it's all right. If you shorten your leash, stop that, please. Stop that, please. Please. It's not his fault. It's a human's fault, right? If you have a shorter leash and you already had food on his nose and you didn't have your phone in your hand, you could have got him down the street. It's all good. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's not his fault. Okay, so you can see her first response is what? Is to scold the dog. It's the dog's fault. And then what did I remind her of? Well, actually, 
It's not his fault. It's your fault, right? You could have had the phone in your pocket. You could have had the lease shorter. It's your fault, right? And she just froze and listened, which was great, you know? And hopefully she took it as a learning moment and she'll go figure out how to train her dog and use her leash properly and guide the dog where the dog needs to go with luring and cues and prompts and all the things that us legitimate dog trainers do, right? So it's always the human. That's the good news, okay? Your dog has no moral imperative to disobey you. That's a lie. That's a bold-faced, dishonest lie, and it can be proven every single time that the dog has no moral imperative when their behavior is assessed by people who understand applied behavior analysis, when people understand the motivations of dogs. Here's the deal, all right? If you use fear and pain, whether it's, hey, cut it out, Right, right. Whether you yell at your dog, you jerk their leash, you use a shock collar or a choke collar, if that is the punisher that you are using, that needs to be put in place every time. So now you have an adversarial relationship with an innocent creature and you're causing them some level of fear or pain or some kind of threat for them to change their behavior. So you're motivating the animal out of fear to behave. That sucks. It's a shitty way to live. It really is. It sucks for the dog. It sucks for the people. I'm not saying you can't have a human moment with a dog and say, dude, go lay down. I just walked you for an hour, man. I got to chill. I, I, I can't go lay down or I'll time you out. I'll put you in your crate, okay? All right, good, right? And that's how I handle stuff. I'm not a robot, but I don't cause dogs fear and pain, okay? I just don't do it. If they're doing it, it's because I gave them access to it and it's my fault and I recalibrate my behavior. If you use positive reinforcement, Right? If you use food, scent, access, toy tosses, if you use those as reinforcers to maintain behavior, you have a sound animal. You have a sound dog. And if you use some negative reinforcement, which I like to call implementing some disappointing bummers for the dog. For example, if I go to give a dog a treat and they try to snatch it out of my hand, I move my hand away. Or I might recalibrate and pay the dog with a flat hand underneath their chin so the trajectory goes towards the floor and not as intense towards my face and my hand where the dog is jumping to get the treat. So I change my behavior to get better behavior from the dog. It's binary. That's how it works. That's how legitimate animal trainers train animals. They don't go in the dog's head and create a narrative making the dog an adversary. They don't because they're legit and they know dogs don't have a moral imperative to disobey you. They're doing things based on a reinforcement history. Period. Full stop. End of story. That's how dog behavior works. Again, humans are the focus. It's human beings. Us. We have the responsibility to learn how to train our dogs without fear and pain, learn how to manage environments with leashes and gates and distance, and help dogs get through stressful situations with work-to-eat toys and things to chew and dissect so they have mental stimulation and less stress. That's up to us. It's not like this information is being hidden from people. So if you know somebody who has a hey-no-cut-it-out routine and they're jerking their dog around their leash and they're generally treating their dog like a piece of luggage then you should direct them to this podcast and remind them that dogs can land 25 bites in 4 seconds. And fear is the underlying cause for aggression. Period. End of story. Full stop. We don't have to discuss it. That's what fear breeds. It breeds aggression. And if it doesn't result in aggression, then the dog is just shut down, living with some stage or some kind of learned helplessness. And that sucks too. And it sucks for the humans to have to interact with an innocent creature by causing them some kind of fear or pain or threat. Remember, nobody gets a dog and says, ooh, I can't wait to shock him. Nobody, unless you're a jerk or a sociopath or an animal abuser. And that's what a lot of this quote-unquote training and a, lot of, and a lot of what these quote-unquote trainers are. They're abusers. And a lot of them are ignorant. And they have no idea about the science of behavior. None. They're just crossing their fingers and they're hoping the dog stops doing it so the client's happy. Now, if you want to learn how to train your dog without the use of fear and pain, if you want to help your dog get through every single day of their life so they feel good or as good about things as possible, get a hold of me. My name is Drayton Michaels. I'm a dog trainer and I'm a behavior technician. You can reach out to me at moderndogtraining.com and I'll be more than happy to help you remotely or if you're in my area, we can meet and we can help your dog that way. But please, for all that is holy about dogs, and I love them dearly with all my heart, you got to stop doing these things because they are not helping. They're just not. All right. Thanks for listening to the Eight Limbs Podcast. 
please check me out on Instagram at Urban Dogs, at Pitbull Guru, at Modern Dog Training. Check me out on Twitter at Pitbull Guru. All right, y'all have a very, very great day with your dogs. Train safe. And remember, force free every day, all day. Take care of yourselves.